I noticed I have about 70 unopened mail packages to get through, and a lot of them are similar enough items. I decided to help expedite this. I'm just going to group some of them together and open them as if it's one item, and probably get through about 15 packages today. The first one I ordered maybe three weeks ago. I don't know why they put circuit boards in anti-static bags, but it's even resealable, so I'll keep that for other purposes. These are 24 and 28 pin surface mount chip to dip adapter packages. So it's SOIC as well as the smaller SOP. And the reason I bought these specifically at this point in time I already have a bunch of similar ones for smaller packages from years ago. However many different ones are in here, all the way down to just 8-pin chips. But I recently needed to use a 24-pin tiny package, and I wanted to convert it to dip, but I didn't have a board big enough. So, of course, it's no problem to have extra pads, so if I can go up to 28 pins, That'll cover a lot of chips. And I ordered two different batches of an IC, which actually needs these adapters. So there's the second batch. When there's a part that I want to use soon, I might sometimes order it from a couple of different places to make sure there's a better chance something will come in. PCF8575. That's the 16-channel I2C GPIO expander. It's 24 pins, so if I want to prototype with this on a breadboard, now I can put it on a board like this and plug it into the breadboard like a module. This one is more of a restocking. It's a bunch of those micro SD card modules. Two different styles. One of them is better suited to directly going on a 3.3 volt project, and the other has level shifting so it can work on a 5 volt project a lot easier. I've been using these throughout the past year for things like this color computer cassette file audio player to load software into the Tandy Coco. Before I made the PCB with a card reader built in, I was using one of these SD card modules on a breadboard to talk to the Nano at 5 volts and use the 3.3 volt micro SD card. And for this AY38910 sound generator module, I was also plugging in an SD card module to play back old video game music on the Nano. So I only had a couple of these I wanted to restock. And because I have so many SD cards in use all the time, I saw these SD card holders, and those are good for just keeping all the cards around, because every so often when they're on sale I might buy a batch of 10 micro SD cards, and once I take them out of their package it's easy to lose them, especially when there's some near the computer, some near the 3D printer, some near these PCB projects. I thought this would make it easier to hang on to them. Then. I have been accumulating a bunch of surface mount components, starting with these capacitors. These are 0603. I can't remember why I bought this. I'd rather work with 0805, but maybe it's the assortment of values that I wanted. I could only easily find it in this size. Or maybe these were a lot cheaper at the time. I just can't remember now. That's part of the problem with buying stuff, and then it sits in the mail queue waiting to be opened. But I can still work with these, putting them on 0805 pads, just putting a solder bridge maybe, if they don't fit nicely. And I don't do enough surface mount to worry about the struggles of using the wrong part, so I just felt I needed some more capacitor values. And I'd like to get more part storage trays implemented because with a bunch of separate parts, I don't want to just stick all of this in one tray, and every time I need a capacitor of a certain value, i got to go dig through all of these. So I want to also get more sorted out with part storage cabinets. A bunch of other surface mount stuff. I'll just open all of this.
TLC272. That's a dual op amp. I've been using these. I'm going to write on them what they are because it's a lot easier to work with. I had good luck using this op amp in some stuff like audio mixers or audio signal buffering to split one source into three sources. So in case I do a surface mount PCB project with op amps, I wanted a supply of those. 74HC4050. That's a hex buffer with a wide operating supply range and it can be used as a level shifter. So maybe those can be powered at 3.3 volts and accept 5 volt inputs. So that could be useful. 7660. Those are the negative voltage rail generators. I've been using those to do mostly minus 5 volts out of plus 5 and sometimes minus 9 volts generated from plus 9 volts for op amps or analog switch ICs where they use a split rail supply to pass analog signals that go above and below ground. 74HC74, dual D flip-flop, standard digital logic building blocks, can also be used as a clock divider every time you send a square wave at a certain frequency through the flip-flop, the output frequency will be half. So using this with music, you can lower the sound by one octave going through these if you have digital audio generators. 4066 is a quad analog switch. I've used these before on a PCB to enable or disable a few audio paths going into an op amp when generating tones from a 555, possibly changing them by an octave with a flip-flop, and then having multiple outputs being turned on or off to create multiple different tones, maybe harmonies, things like that. So if I want to go surface mount, I can do something like this. And now I have a bunch more through-hole ICs to open up. CD4051 is an 8-channel analog multiplexer or demultiplexer. So that has a common pin and then eight other switched pins that can be used to route either one of eight signals down to one output or one input, switching between eight possible outputs. TLC274 quad op amp and TLC272 dual op amp, same as those surface mount ones. Those are the ones I was having good luck with on some audio circuits, so I thought I would stock up. I don't know if one fell out. Yes, it did, and I ran over it with the chair. So it has a few broken limbs, but nothing I can't straighten out. The interesting thing here is they all kind of have varying appearances. Some are shinier, duller. Some have that silver coating. So I wonder if these really are new old stock taken out of things. I think there's some circuits you can build to sort of test op amps like maybe the slew rate, things like that, and compare against the data sheet. So you may not be able to say it's exactly the right part, but you might be able to tell it's operating close enough, even if these are a different part where they rebadged it. So maybe as I keep buying more stuff like this, I'll maybe work on a little test setup to try and check the specs on things like op amps. And the CD4017 decade counter, often used in light chasers and LED effects like a Larson scanner with LEDs going on back and forth one at a time. Basically, you give this a clock source and there's 10 outputs that go on one at a time. And then it can start over. Or you can connect the reset pin to one of the outputs and make it start over after less than 10 clocks. So you can make it just go one to five over and over. And these also get used in do-it-yourself synthesizer sequencer circuits where each time an output goes active, it'll trigger a different pitch on a synthesizer. So you can create a repeating pattern of tones. LM393 comparators. Figured I would stock up on those in case I need those. One thing I've used things like this for when I was using one of those clip-on current transformers trying to trigger an ESP8266 when a certain amount of current is being used. 
a comparator is a good way to have a set point and when the sensor output exceeds the threshold set on the comparator, the ESP can do something to say we have at least this much current present right now. They're always useful to have around as everyday parts. And Princess Auto had a sale, and I was also at Costco, so I acquired some stuff. First at Costco, these four plastic storage bins. They're a reasonable size, whatever it is, but it's also that better quality plastic. And it works out, I think these were maybe $3 and something each with the four pack. And I know in the dollar store these days you might spend $4 for this, and it's that really thin, flimsy, useless plastic. So I saw this and I had to just get it because there's endless uses for these. Also at Costco, these long power strips. I bought one of these the last time I was there and it worked out okay. So I bought two more now because there's endless uses for these. I probably have almost 10 of these already around the house. Anywhere there's a television, I need these. I use these because you've got a television, and in my case I have a mini PC on each one. There may be a network switch, there may be a lamp, there may be a receiver and some other stereo equipment, and before you know it, you've used it all up. Likewise, on every workbench table, there's one of these. And with guitar equipment, plug in an amplifier and a couple of power supplies for effect pedals, maybe another lamp, maybe even another amplifier or such, and before you know it, you're running out again. And of course, anywhere there's a computer, you need to plug in the computer, maybe one or two monitors, a couple of external USB hard drives, a lamp, miscellaneous stuff, Arduino, 5 volt USB power sources, and before you know it, you're gonna run out. This one actually has a USB power out. And Princess Auto is where I got the rest of the stuff. I got a couple more of these cutting mats. I think it's 18 by 24 inches. Of course I use those everywhere there's a work table. And another use I found for these, if I have a project set up somewhere, especially if it's got a chip that needs to be programmed, I might be working on the electronics somewhere, then I need to bring it somewhere else to program it, or whatever. So I can just carry the mat with all of the stuff on it a lot easier. Less chance wires are going to fall out of it and everything like that. And this four pack of pick and hook type stuff. So with various angles of curved edges, as well as this straight one, there's something I may be doing soon where I need to actually get in underneath some metal contacts and bend them, pry them back up because they get recessed after a while and you have to just reform them. So I could try to use a small precision screwdriver or even a paper clip or something, but this is probably the tool for the job. And a three pack of long screwdrivers was on sale. There's two Phillips and one flathead because you never know when you're maybe working on the workbench and something you're trying to take apart is way over on the other side of the workbench, so what better way to get at it? And of course, part storage trays. I think it's been two years since I bought some of these storage trays, like those over there and some others on another shelf. And one of the things I want to try doing is sorting out a lot of surface mount stuff, especially a whole bunch of 0805 resistors and capacitors, because right now, for all resistor values, I probably have them in three trays, and the same with capacitors. So I'd rather split it up over more trays and use maybe a range of part values in each tray to make it easier so I'm not flipping through everything all the time. And there's a couple of Amazon packages. I got two 8-inch splash symbols. The one is an AAX and the other is a Paragon. Splash symbols are more for an accent sound. And these both being 8 inch, sometimes the same diameter symbol of two different models can have totally different pitches or other characteristics. These two actually sound very similar. What I did when making a decision since I bought it online without directly sampling them in a store, I took some other similar ones that I have and I went and watched some YouTube demos of various symbols to see what sounds like it might fit with what I've already got and for what I'm trying to accomplish. 
So they both have different pitches, but also this one, the Paragon, to me, sounds more like a chimey bell, and it sounds darker, heavier. Almost sort of like a mini gong. The AAX, it sounds thinner and brighter to me. So depending what kind of accent sound you're trying to get, you just kind of hit one or the other. So I had two empty cymbal mounts, and I thought I would fill in the blanks with these. It's hard to tell what's going on here. I can't really get a good camera view, but I just put the Paragon 8-inch up here where I had an empty space. The 8-inch AAX is right here where I had an empty space. So they're a slightly different pitch, although they have a similar sound. So if I'm working over here, and I want that sound, it's right there. If I'm working over here, I have that sound. So then I have other accents. And a couple of crashes. China. And ride. In the past year, I've done a lot more parts collecting and hoarding, so now, hopefully this year, I can get sorted out.